cannot love God and believe everything you see. And this world has done a great job at this. Showing you part of a scene on television. And it gets you to do something that you would not have done if you knew the whole story. The lust of the eyes. You look around and you see something. Man, I see folks and I see this. and I, Get your eyes off of that. Get it on Jesus. Amen. The lust of our flesh. Amen. That means those desires that come up. That's, a, that's the lust of the, of, of the flesh. That not of God. These desires of God. Man, you know, I, 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 I think that I'm not going to be able to go to church that much anymore. Because I got a new job. That doesn't sound like God to me. How long are you going to live anyway? 120 years at the most? If I give all 120 years to God, if I live to be that old, I give every ounce of it to God. Because when I'm dead and when I'm gone, nothing else is going to matter. Nothing else will make any matter. God doesn't want to know how many times you was early being at work on your job. He don't want to know how many times you lay down on the floor and you cried out the name of Jesus. He don't want to know how many folks you've been telling about him. You see, we get it so mixed up. We get it so backwards sometimes. Uh, amen. And, and, and trying to figure out but the lust of our flesh. The devil dangles all these things out before us. Uh, amen. This and that. He tell I'm going to give you a career. A career will make you look like you're smart, don't you? But you ain't got God. You ain't smart at all. You ain't giving your life to God. You ain't smart at all. In case you don't know, some of the smartest folks in this world has never been to college. Amen. This is preaching. They said you got to go to college to, to be somebody. Yeah, you go to college to get in debt. That's right. And you hold them for the rest of your life. This brain that God gave you can do anything. How I many y'all believe this? How I many of you been called that you need to go to school to become this? I didn't read in there that Jesus went to college. Anybody read anything like that? Oh no. You didn't read anything like that. And I'm not knocking college. Because we got a college. Come to town. And it's not like a college of the world. There is no science in our, in our class. Wait a Anybody been in our school? Raise your hand. Any graduates from the NTCC? There was no math there, was it? There was no science there. You said, what was it, preacher? All 40 credits, all based on the word of Almighty God. Yeah. All about Jesus. Every book, every right, everything was all about Jesus. There was no evolution in there. There was no science in there. There was nothing about it. All was about God Almighty. And I enjoyed every moment of it. I enjoyed every second of being in that class. And it was, it was just like being in, in the greatest institution of my life. Working and going to school. Working and going to school. I just want to get a, I like how we I just want to get a, a, a grant. That's what they call it. Did I get it right? I want to get a grant. And so they, that somebody else can pay my way to school. You can't do that at New Testament Christian College. You pay your own way. You ain't willing to pay your own way. You don't need to be a preacher. Amen. Amen. And I had to work on a job. And everybody else did. Did you have to work on the Reverend Stevens? You have to work on a job. Reverend Stevens, did you? Yeah, did you work on a job? Sister Marcella, you didn't work. <laughs> her, her husband did. Where Reverend Tanks at? All right. And when we have to, I believe that also, that that man ought to get off his behind and go to work. Amen. Quit depending on his wife to go. Now, if the, if the husband is sick, it's totally something different. But ain't nothing wrong with me. I can get out there and do something. I can dig a hole. Amen. 
And I spent part of my life growing up working on a tobacco farm. Amen. And, and now I'm too good to get out of the field to work for God. Let me get back home source. I am the vine and you are the branch. And he that abided in me. See, you got to abide. This is what we're talking about, being connected. Are you connected to God? Are you connected to the source of life? He made the statement again. I'm going to read it again. That he that abided in me. And I in him the same. You want to bring forth fruit for God Almighty? You got to abide in him. And he has to abide in you. You bring forth the Bible that much fruit will begin to come out of your life. Uh, just by abiding in God. I'm staying connected with God. I'm not going to bring my connection with God to go over here and to go over there. I'm going to stay connected with the Lord God Almighty. He's my king. And I tell you those story one of these one of these fine moments of life. Man, I stood in that little room and man, anybody ever got in trouble at work, raise your hand. I, man, I was definitely in trouble. <laughs> I had to carry a young kid and, and he was, I think the police had him. So only certain ones could handle the kids to get them to a different location. And so they, they called me on my radio and said, you need to pick up this one child and, and you need to take him way out by Gig Harbor. And I said, no problem. And I, and, I, and I went out and I picked up the kid and, and I said, look now, I want you to know, I told you this earlier, I've got a class tonight. He said, you got plenty of time to get to your class. I said, no problem. And I got on the highway and I started driving. Man, I haven't even got there. That clock was ticking fast. <laughs> and I ran to your back. I said, look, I don't know where you got your time from, but there is no way I'm going to make it to Gig Harbor and come back and park this big old truck and then go all the way to Graham. There is absolutely no way it can be done. He said, you got to, you got to drop him off. Oh, no, you're going to tell me what I've got to do. I turned my radio off. Now, don't you do this. I turned the radio off. I spin that big old bus around. I drove that bus all the way back to the company. I brought that kid into the office. I dropped him off at the dispatcher's door, at his door, and said, You take it. He said, You can't do that. Done, done it. And that ain't good English, is it? I did it already. I'm out of here. Oh boy, you talking about the next day. Oh, help me, Jesus. Man, that was waiting on me. The head man from Seattle that came down was waiting on me. <laughs> we need to talk to you. Man, they got my representative. Somebody had to represent me when I went in there. Man, I walked in that big old office and there they all sit. They was ready to crucify me and the Lord on the cross. They said, did you know what you did violated our policy? Big deal to me. I said, look, I told the dispatcher, I was very clear. He said, well, you can't do what you did. I said, well, he shouldn't have lied. Then the man from Seattle spoke up. You know what he had the, the audacity to say? He said, it looks like you love your God and your school more than your job. Lord, he shouldn't have said that. <laughs> he shouldn't have said that. I looked at that dude sitting behind that desk. I said, I sure do. The lady sitting beside me jumped up and said, he doesn't know what he's saying. I said, oh, her, you shut up. I know exactly what I'm saying. I said, when I came to Washington, I was looking for a job, and I said, if you get rid of me, God will give me another job. <laughs> you talking to the baby man, Reverend Hall. I know who I'm talking to. I wasn't talking to God. I was talking to a man. The main source is Jesus. Don't you ever forget that. The Bible said, don't you ever fear a man. 
Don't ever fear a man becomes a snare in your life. I'm afraid, I'm afraid. I gotta get, uh, I tell them all the time, I got a job to do for God. If you wanna hire me, that's great, but I'ma tell you, this is what I do for God and I'm not gonna change. 